on the Amazon Meeting Center in downtown Seattle. It's the Cube covering Imagine a Better World, a global education conference sponsored by Amazon Web Services. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're in Seattle, Washington at the AWS Imagine Education Conference. It's the first one. Teresa Carlson just kicked off the keynote. About 900 registrants from over 20 countries worldwide. We saw it happen with the public sector before. They went from 50 people to 15,000. I think she said in seven years. I'm imagining that Imagine is going to have the same track. Because education is so, so important. We're excited our next guest came all the way from the other side of the pond, the other side of the Atlantic. He's Peter O'Rourke, Director of IT for the University of Suffolk. Peter, great to Thanks, see you. Thanks, Jeff, for the welcome. Yes, it's fantastic to be here with this exciting crowd. And as Teresa said, it'd be great to be here in seven years at a huge event. At a huge event. We'll yeah. probably be in Vegas. They like to have those big ones down in Vegas. <laughs> so, what brings you here? It's a long way. Education is, is clearly super important. Digital transformation and cloud, we see it all over the place. But what's the application that you're looking at? What are you excited about in bringing kind of cloud economics to the University of Suffolk? Well, Jeff, the, 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 the key thing in education has got to be about student experience. And that's the thing we've got to keep driving at all the time. What's exciting about partners like Amazon is the potential that they talk about. It's not what they're doing today, it's what they're talking about they're going to do tomorrow and the day after. And as they've just said, this is day one. Right. This is an exciting journey to engage with, with these uh, partners. So how have the student experience kind of expectations morphed over time as you get kind of digital native kids coming up into the school now and, and, and kind of, you know, we've seen it on the business side, the consumerization of IT, because people expect their interactions with their companies, their banks and their retailers to be like it is with their phone and their computer. How are you seeing the expectations change from your students on what they want and how they want to interact with all the services that you guys provide them? Good question. Um, and again, the mobile phone is, is, is the key here. People arrive at your organizations, whether, whether they're universities or, or retail establishments, and they already know how they're going to work with you. And when you can't do that, that's a huge disappointment. So these people are using things in their daily life to arrange trips, theatre tickets, cinema, and when you can't work like that, there's a huge disconnect. Right, right. The other big issue that happens that we're seeing more and more is mobile. And, and you know, universities, you guys are always limited on space. There's yeah. always lots of construction and new buildings and new labs and new academic offices and, and classrooms. So space is always an issue. How does you know, mobile specifically, as you mentioned, enable you to provide a different experience, a better experience, a more varied experience when you've got all these other uh, kind of constraints that you're faced with? How mobile it can help with that? It, it's about allowing your users to consume their content where and when they want to. It's exactly how they live their daily lives. So, you know, maybe you can't make a lecture today, but why should that really matter? Right. You should be able to pick this up later. Right. And the last piece is the staff. Um, and, you know, a lot of the, the teachers weren't necessarily educated in, in CS. That wasn't kind of why they got into the business, mm. especially if they say in history mm. or philosophy or, or some of the, maybe the softer sciences. How are you seeing their adoption of technology to be, you know, don't be afraid of it, it's actually a great enabler, can help you do your job better. How are you seeing their adoption of some of this technology in some of the softer uh, academic areas? Well, good, again, good question, but it's, it's a huge challenge. Uh, I think for too long what we've tried to do from a technology perspective is to turn absolutely brilliant academic colleagues into technologists, and that's not why they came into education. Right. What's exciting about what's happening now is that we're able to enable them to use much, much simpler technology tools or interfaces that are actually doing amazing things in the background, and they don't need to understand how it does it, and that's the way it should be. Right, so last question, what are you expecting to get out of this conference for a day and a half here in Seattle? Ton of educators, a ton of people from your industry, first ever event of this type for AWS. What are you hoping to take away? Uh, I'm hoping to take away a ton of exciting ideas that are almost impossible to install, but there's going to be one or two gems in there that we can work with people like Amazon going forward. And we're going to come back in a year's time and we want to talk about what we've done. Right. That's the exciting thing. That is the key, right? What have you done? Yes. And now with cloud, you can do it. I think they talked about a project in the keynote that was three months yeah. from ideation to actually starting to ship stuff. So yeah, you can do it. That's what we've got to do. Right. All right, Peter. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes uh, of your day and good luck with the rest of the conference. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for talking to me. All right. Cheers. Peter. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at AWS Imagine.
Imagine Education in Seattle, Washington. Thanks for watching.